Hey guys, what's going on? It is Wednesday, and I decided to start calling these Wednesdays Wisdom Wednesdays. When I get to share my experience, my knowledge, and the stuff I've learned from my mentors and the people that inspire me as well. And today I want to talk to you guys about the biggest problems I find that exist within the gay community. And I actually wrote a blog post recently, and the link is attached below if you want to read that. So click that link, and it's the top 10 reasons why the gay community is so competitive. So let's get right to it, you guys. Um, and again, this is the gay community that I'm speaking for. But again, this is my own opinion. And I think that a lot of these problems are problems that exist in communities across the world and aren't only, you know, really focused solely in the gay community. Again, though, this is my experience, my opinions, so what have you. Um, the first thing that I think is not so much a problem, but it's how we manage it is that we go through a second adolescence. We are basically grown-up kids for a second time in our lives because we didn't go through junior high and high school like everyone else. We didn't get to date and experiment and experience all those things that our straight peers were doing. So we usually, you know, grow up and move to one of the big cities and find a bunch of people that are like us. But the thing is, when you give a little kid access to a candy store and there's no more parents moderating them and they have their own money that they're making, they're going to go crazy. And that's going to be a super crazy kid on a super crazy sugar high. And that's kind of the metaphor I use when we're talking about, you know, that second adolescence, that Peter Pan situation that a lot of people often quote. And we just have to be careful that we are really understanding what it is that we're looking for and what we want in life when we do grow up and get to experience our true selves. Now, something else I think that is a huge problem in the gay community is that we separate ourselves. We've got our, you know, jocks and hunks and twinks and twunks and otters and bears and lions. Oh my, like it's a never-ending animal kingdom. But the thing is, by separating ourselves, even if it's just based off of a look, we're making ourselves into subgroups and subcategories that just kind of break up what I think should be a brotherhood. And it's really disheartening because it's something that is truly perpetuating stereotypes that just aren't always true. And this leads to my third kind of big issue right now that I've been seeing is that we have such a struggle with the idea of masculinity because it's juxtaposed against femininity. So if you're not mask or super hyper-masculine, you must be feminine. But the thing is, no one is just one of those things. We all, gay and straight, walk this fine line between masculine and feminine and, you know, allowing different parts of ourselves to come up at different points. So we really need to just allow those things to be what they are and not so get bent up on, like, this idea of being masculine because what that says is that you're still insecure in who it is that you fundamentally are, which is just another unique, beautiful person. Now, I don't think that you have to, you know, go about your day and be this or that or not this or not that. But again, you can't get stuck on one idea because it's just not going to do anything good for you. Another thing I think that is kind of interesting for our community is that no one really knows our past unless you kind of do what I do and you share it on YouTube or Instagram or a blog. You know, we get to grow up and, again, everyone gets to do this at some point. Go off to college or move to another place and kind of change who you are. But we also don't have to necessarily deal with the things we've had in our past and that baggage which means that we can just kind of create this whole new identity that someone from your childhood that may be friends with knows about you. These new people don't. And that is going to kind of put you into a place where you can be whoever you want, but it might not be who you actually want to be. You're just trying to fit into something that doesn't fit. And there's no point in trying to fit in somewhere that just isn't you. Be your authentic self. Be who you want to be. And don't worry about other people and what they're doing and how they're going about their lives because the right person will find you and love you for you. Another point that I'm going to touch on real quick is just the idea that we 
strive for this success, for this idea of perfection, of being better, because for so long we were told by not only ourselves but our peers that we were not good enough. And the thing is, we are good enough, and we get to grow up and figure this out for ourselves through our jobs, through our friends, through our work, through working on ourselves, and eventually, hopefully, through ourselves. But if we're never actually being loved for us, and we're being loved for those external things like our success and stuff, then other people are going to come at us and they're not going to be genuine and authentic and it's going to feel really shitty. And you're also going to see that success doesn't make you so popular because a lot of people still aren't working on the things you may be working on, which again is so disheartening because in the end, I think we are a brotherhood and should act as one and only build each other up rather than tear each other down. The last thing I really want to just get off my chest and talk about is something that I think is only really in the gay universe and that's the fact that we are all so connected and everyone is a possibility and our exes can date each other and we can end up you know having a friend that becomes a boyfriend that becomes an ex and then like, that person goes on to date someone who used to be our friend who we also hooked up with then they become exes it's just so intertwined in an almost awesome way but also like really disgusting way that we can't avoid. But when you are mature and understand that these are going to be things that we have to deal with, it makes all of it a little bit easier to to understand and in fact deal with. So rather than harping and booing and getting all bent out of shape about these things, we have to figure out how to go about this, I think, in a better way. And how to just be chore and Understand that maybe something didn't work out between you and an ex, so it's best to maintain a friendly relationship or at least be acquaintances that can say hello. Again, this can go on and on, and I'm going to touch on more topics about this because it's something I'm super passionate about. But for now, if you'd like to read more, please go to the link below. Um, and if you liked this video, then please give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you liked this video and you want to hear more real serious discussions on this kind of stuff. Also, if you have a question or a comment, I love hearing from you guys, so please leave one in this section below. And last but not least, if you haven't already, then please subscribe by clicking that little button up there. It lets you know when a new video is up and ready to go, where we do talk about some serious things on Wednesdays, some fitnessy things on Fridays, and some fun things on Sundays. I will talk to you guys soon. Much love. Over and out. Bye, guys.